I'm very happy and honored that uh, President Saskashvili from uh, Georgia is visiting Maastricht University today and he didn't want to miss the opportunity to uh, meet uh, with students and staff from our university. And the topic of your talk is uh, political and social transformation in Georgia and the region. Please. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm pleased to be in that this university because it's a very international one. Uh, I was thinking, you know, I always prided ourselves of positive immigration balance to Georgia. More people come back to live, but now I have my doubts because there are 12 students from Georgia at this university. Uh, we are a very small country. Uh, it's a considerable number of our young population that migrated to your uh, university and to this city. Uh, learned uh, in order to prove how Dutch you are is that you should know how to pronounce mm, the name of this city because the whole Europe says it's it's Maastricht, right? Uh, and it makes Dutch very nervous because it's Maastricht or uh, I should try several times more but then I, I can make it. So yeah. here I am I'm representing my country and uh, um, it's a very important moment for Europe. It's a very important moment also for geopolitics in general, a moment of truth uh, for those who, you know, have been following, and I guess all of you, the events in, in this continent. We used to be you know, one of the worst places in the world to do business. The World Bank said that we are world's number one economic reformer based on five years period, which is to say no other country has made as much progress as we did in terms of easing uh, business environment. There are lots of other things that make Georgia a very unique experience from that point of view. How did we do all of that? We did it through very, very radical reform and very radical transformation. Um, sometimes, and it's also another misunderstanding culturally we have with European experts, they say, oh, you know, our criticism, main criticism of Georgian reforms was you are doing things too fast, you are rushing with conclusions, you are not doing broad consultations, you are not summoning all kind of international experts, you are not listening to our advice, but we had no time. We were really in trouble. What we did, we had to do things. The first thing we did, we fired the entire police force. Uh, we fired something like 17,000 people. We, uh, everybody thought that traffic accident would skyrocket, criminals would go and start shooting people in the, in the streets, rob shops. In fact, uh, crime rate a little bit went down and traffic accidents didn't really grow. So what showed us that the police we had was part of the problem and not the solution. We also did very important, uh, doing very important educational reform, which so basically every child that there was, they get to school, gets a native professor of English and gets a, a, a personal computer to take home back home. That, by the way, this is another way to fight poverty. And for me, test of democracy is social mobility, how much the young people can succeed. And if you look at figures, uh, as I said, we have post-immigration balance. That means young people are no longer living. Even if our economy has tripled in nominal terms, it's still a uh, low-middle-income country. It has no gas and oil. So it's remarkable that even at that level of income, young people are not living. So they see prospects. So there is upward mobility in the society, which is very important. When I became president in territories which were still controlled under the Georgia government minority area, the situation was very tense. Every single international conflict resolution and uh, prevention organization was present on the ground waiting for the worst to happen. Now they're all gone from the areas where there is no Russian control. Why did it happen? Because basically minorities start to, inter to integrate. We adopted law giving all the groups equal rights. We started po programs for positive advancements, advancement of minorities, uh, positive discrimination, and it worked. Actually, I was welcomed by crowds in the street there. Uh, I went to a new local university where every student was briefed in detail about Georgia reforms. Why? Because for those countries, it's irrelevant. The same case in Ukraine. And even in Russia today, lots of Russian opposition figures are saying they want Georgian type of reforms, and that's pretty remarkable. Now people are looking if they could make it without, as I said, oil and gas, and with this kind of preconditions, then any, any of us can make it. If you could add every Georgian student every week, I would come every week and lecture you on know, different subjects. I have many other things and many other spheres where I can share my whatever acquired knowledge. Thank you. have probably never, I would not imagine that you get a head of state from a European country who comes to university and, and uh, 
interacts this open in an open discussion with students, uh, and, and very much thanks for that. Thank yeah, and uh, big applause. Uh -huh. And uh, one more word, one more word. I think uh, it's also encouraging that we hope that a lot more students come from Georgia, this university, and we will also encourage our students to go to Georgia because I think uh, we also can learn there a lot. Thanks again for coming. Thank you so much.